Hey, how you doing? It's Mr. Clifford with ACTC Econ, Key Economic Concepts. We're talking about something called deadweight loss and efficiency. Now, in economics, particularly microeconomics, when we use the word efficiency, we're talking about for society, not just for a firm, like, oh, it's good that we're efficient. We're talking about society, efficiency for society. So, pay attention. We're going to talk about efficient marks and something called deadweight loss or efficiency lost. Take a look. A regular market with demand and supply looks like this, and you end up getting an equilibrium price and quantity done. That's easy. Most students got that perfectly. Another concept is consumer surplus. Most people understand that. When I'm willing to pay for something, what I did pay was this price, and so this area, this triangle up here, is something called consumer surplus. That makes sense. Down here, if someone is willing to sell it for a certain amount, that's what supply curves mean, willingness to sell something, and they sold it for that price, and so this right here, is producer's surplus. Now, that's extremely efficient, right? All the consumers who wanted it can buy it above that price, they all get it. All the producers that can produce it at this lower price, they can sell it, that's efficient. Now, what is deadweight loss all about? Now, pay attention, here's what it is. Let's say we have a different market. Here's demand, and let's go, here's supply, right? And now, instead of being at PE, right here, let's say, and at QE, let's say we're producing Q, one. For some reason, we don't know why, but let's say they're producing Q1 right here. This is inefficient. Why? Well, here's why. What people are willing to pay, right, this demand curve is up here, and the, what people are willing to sell it for is down here. So this is inefficient. Society says we want more of it, right? If the marginal cost of producing it is less than the marginal benefit to society or what society is willing to pay for it, then society's like, hey, we want more, right? And what happens? Well, that results in deadweight loss. That's what deadweight loss is. Deadweight loss is lost consumer and producer surplus that would normally exist. Now, here's your question. Why would we ever be producing Q1? Duh, doesn't make any sense. Why would we ever do that? A market's going to be at equilibrium. Except if it's a monopoly, right? What if it's a monopoly? Well, put in a marginal revenue curve right here. What do we got? A monopoly. There it is. Marginal revenue, demand, they produce where MR hits the MC, which is right there, which is kind of a supply curve in this example. Marginal revenue, marginal cost. Here, they charge a price up to demand. And what do we have? We have deadweight loss. Again, you can show consumer surplus is here, right? For the monopoly, producer surplus is right there. For the monopoly, producer surplus, consumer surplus. We have inefficiency, deadweight loss. Until next time. Bonus round. Okay. So we just showed you a monopoly with deadweight loss. Well, is that the only time there's deadweight loss? No, it's not. What if there's a tax? Here's another way. What if the government's taxing something, and here's quantity at equilibrium, right? And the government puts on a tax, supply with a tax. And so now we're producing this quantity, Q1. Well, what do we got? Guess what? We have deadweight loss. There it is again. Consumer surplus would normally exist if we were producing at Q1 and charging this price here, but we're not. We're now charging a higher price, producing a lower quantity. Again, dead weight loss. That's the concept. You want to see another one, don't you? You want another bonus round? Do you? Do you want another one? Okay, let's do this. Let's say instead of a tax, let's say the government does something different and they put in a price ceiling. Here's price, here's quantity, here's demand, here's supply, the price, at equilibrium and quantity equilibrium, done, perfect. Consumer surplus, produce surplus, efficient market. But the government comes in, we said, with a price ceiling. A price ceiling is going to go below equilibrium. And the reason why it's keeping the price from going to e equilibrium. So let's say P1, boom, 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 here's your price ceiling, price ceiling. Well, what's going to happen? Take a look. New quantity is here. This is the quantity supplied. At the low price, people want the quantity demanded. But the quantity supply is the only thing produced, right? We're not producing anything beyond that. So this is the quantity that's actually produced in the economy. Well, what happens? Guess what? Up, 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 up. Dead weight loss. There it is again. All right, the reason why is this consumer surplus, produce surplus, that would have existed if we produced at QE, or not, we're producing right here at the quantity supplied at P1. Now, let me show you where the consumer and producer surplus goes. Consumer surplus is going to be here. Consumer surplus. Producer surplus is going to be this little triangle. And the result is, for society, dead weight loss. Perfect. Until next time.